Well, no, well, you did one one week where you. Yeah, but well, I got it wrong. You changed it all up. You did all my bits and all my sections, and so anyway. We're in a we're in a kitchen. <laughs> we're not just in a kitchen. We're in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. <coughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Of someone who's got a sore throat. Yeah. Someone's just a heard, heard a third voice there. So uh, that yeah. makes the 11th episode quite special, I think. I think it does. Our very first guest. It is. Yeah. Legend. Well, I've not even introduced a podcast. I know, but I just want to get a word in because I won't do later on. Like you've ever not got a word in. It's not going to happen. No, no. It's over to you. Well, hello. Welcome back to Confessions from the Back Seat. Today is a special episode. We have a very special guest with us. He's a singer, artist from the 80s, film star, <laughs> reality Easy star. Now. You're making him laugh already. Do you know when I said it was a comedy podcast? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you weren't kidding you two, were you? I've done my research. And you looked on the internet last night, didn't you? Film star. Is that, is that your research? Star. Easy now, easy now. Film hold star. on, hold on. Let's have, you, have, you started, have you been in a film? A short film, a, short a couple film. of short films, but, oh, you know, it, to become a film star, I think there has to be a certain amount of success attached to it. People actually have to watch the film. Yeah, yeah. You uh, didn't think this was where, where this was going to start, did you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought we'd just focus on the, uh, the, uh, Should we do the proper others? successful you bits, proper successful the musical bits. bits you've, of not, that, you've not said who it is yet. He's building up the tension. Okay, right. This tension, is it? Yeah. So it's our pleasure to introduce the fabulous Nathan Moore. Nathan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, interesting and uh, yeah, it should be fun to be here, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, it's your house, so it's, it's always fun in your house. Yeah, and you can kick us out whenever Yeah, thanks for having us over, really. I think this will be a short podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the hub of the house, the kitchen of my home. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lovely kitchen and we a lot of things happen here. This is where all the fun happens, and uh, it was fun on Friday night, apparently. Yeah. So thank you. That was uh, Kitchens with uh, Nathan Moore, and I'm uh, looking forward to the next podcast. <laughs> okay, Car- I'm going to let you know, Carl's had an energy drink before we started, so I have, his, eye, his, dilated, his eyes are dilated at the moment. I'm raring so to go. He's raring to go. His face is a touch redder than normal, so <laughs> we will have to break in between to take his blood pressure just to be on the safe side. Awesome. Just, just to look after you. No, do you know what it is? I'm actually genuinely excited. I can see. Because I am an 80s child and I was I was really into my music. So to be... Uh, an to 80s be, child? Well, no. I, the 80s was my decade. So red coat in 86. Oh, were, were you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So all the, uh, all the stock Aitken and Waterman thing and Sunita and all that and... Yeah, I bet you know her as well, don't you? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knows everyone. We had a chat before. And... Are we talking Pontins then? No, but... No, Butlins. Butlins, Butlins. Sorry, Pontins you is said a blue coat. In Wales. Yeah, right, yes. Yeah, that's blue uh, coat. We, we, we didn't like them. Yeah. But uh, no, it was a, a Patheli in, uh, in 86. Wow. And that's, yeah, yeah well, I'm, I can't believe you're saying wow. We're going to talk about being a pop star in a minute. Yeah. I was I was a... Red coat for five minutes. Well, it's not there anymore, <laughs> is it? No, because... Do you all... know what? They knocked it down last week. Did they really? Yeah, there was a thing on the internet. Because there's loads of groups about people who used to work at Butlins. Right. And, uh, yeah, they, they knocked down the main buildings last week. What did it turn into, then, when, since well, it stopped a... being a Butlins? Was it no, another it's, campsite? It's like a haven or something else. I don't right, know. okay. So it's still, it was still in existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. How have we started talking about this? I don't know. <laughs> you start it. Well, so now there's only three battling sites. Uh, mine. <laughs> and I'm at one of them this weekend. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, I see yeah, what you've done. Yeah, yeah. You've turned it round to you again. Go, well, go. So, I, mean, I just have a habit of doing that. Yeah, I'm at Butlin's hey, Minehead. I've got, I've got some competition. <laughs> he ain't no competition. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Turning <laughs> it back to me. Sounds, yeah. This is a sounds. comedy <laughs> podcast. Right? Yeah. Uh, I've got to say though, the harder I try, the oh, uh, oh, here we are. this oh, is no. the, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it, it, that shut everybody up. That's yeah. Yeah, but it, okay. So, how many Butlin sites were there? Because there are only three now. There are you. You, you are right. You, you. I've mentioned something, and you're a Butlin's expert. I, but, think, yeah. I think I think it was like eight, eight or nine, and then there was the hotels as well. Yeah. Um, but all the hotels seem to short. But they have retro Butlin's people now. I've got somebody I work with in '86. 
Um, she'll find it quite funny because I know she listens to this, so that she's going to get a mention. They still go out dressed as red coats, as older people, and people who used to go in the 70s and 80s go on these retro butlins things. And, oh, brilliant. And, no, so it's, uh, and I still see pictures of her in a, in a red coat outfit. Yeah, fantastic. And I remember when she was 19. Oh. Well, now, <laughs> when, when, I, when, I, when I go to Minehead this weekend, Everyone will be dressed up. Saturday night is the yeah. night when they yeah. when they put on the outfit. You know, they either go as you know Richard Gere and officers and gentlemen. Yeah, that's a, that's a quite popular look. It's quite an easy one to to attain. You know, and put on. You know, yeah. whereas if you go for the Adamant or the Boy George, a lot more work is involved. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's such a great era to mm. borrow from. Say, oh right, who am I going to dress up like now? So Madonna's a really easy one, isn't it? You know, yeah. with the bangles and the and the, and the skirt and the leggings. Um, and, you know, and day glow leggings are such an easy thing to acquire these days. So uh, it just lends itself for a real great party night. And so, uh, um, who do you go as? <laughs> well, I go, I tell them, you know, I'm a tribute to Nathan Moore. Oh, right, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I said, well, the real, real one's got no hair and he's 20 stone now, so, yeah. you know. And this do, you, is... do you get your chest out? Uh, 10 years ago, maybe. Not anymore, because I've noticed anymore. we did do a little bit of research, right. and you do seem to get your chest out a lot. I think it was more in my Worlds Apart era. Oh, was it? Where we were all, f- I mean, Brother Beyond, a f- few of them were a bit heavy. Yeah. Uh, even at the peak of their success. So it was more in Worlds Apart when we uh, we went off to France, and uh, all of us were quite, was that, quite fit and agile and dancing a lot. Was that so. a polite way of saying you were working with chubsters? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I need to afford my experiments <laughs> some respect, please. I um, can't believe you just said to me, you can't say that. You can't say that. Going, is, that is that not politically correct? No, no, even though in the 80s when it was all right to say things, you can't fat shame anybody now, Carl. It's not nice. Uh, it was the 80s. It was the You 80s. could say anything then. But image was everything in the 80s, going back to all the costumes and everything. I mean, it was the thing, weren't it? I remember being... A kid and having uh, the bottle tops on my shoes, like brass, yeah. and mm. you know, image was a big thing. No matter what it was, whether it was showing a bit of flesh or Madonna mm. reinvented herself every twelve months, pretty much, didn't she? She was. Yeah, I mean, and uh, and part of that also was because there was only magazines and um, you know, the pe- magazines like Smash Hits, Number One, Just Seventeen were really important, and especially being a boy band. You know, everyone around you would say, well, what's your look? What's your, what's your identity? You know, um, because your image was like, you know, uh, uh, that was your, you know, your your identity and how you were going to get more publicity. Almost and, it was your brand, wasn't it? Yeah, it was your brand and you, and you so yeah, the bros with the bottle tops, that really worked. Yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we had, I, I, in fact, I had metal steel toe cap showing before bros and they kind of nicked it and augmented it a bit. Um, but that's fine, you know. And I wore some braces earlier on, and uh, yeah. yeah. But it, image, your image had to be because if you if you had a good image, you'd get more, you know, pictures in smash hits. And that, you know, when it was selling a million copies, and awesome. there wasn't the internet, you know, that's how you had to get yourself noticed. So if we go right back to the beginning, yeah. Um, so where where did you grow up? Hertfordshire boy, yeah, really grew up with uh, kind of my two sisters into singing. Just, just oh, yeah. Was, oh, was my my older sister Tida was in a band, right, called the Palm Tree Club, and I would give her lifts to band practice. And one day they said to me, hey, you know, I was sitting there watching them, and they said, oh, "Why don't you get up and sing?" Okay, come on, give us give us a tune, Nathan. Come on, and I got up and jammed with them, and they they said, "Oh, you're great." Okay. Why don't you and, you and your sister sing together? And that was it. I was like, I was in the band. I couldn't believe it. Um, so that was when I was 17 and my sister Tida was 19. And we went out for about two or three years doing pubs around Hertfordshire. Mm. And we, we were quite entertaining. We had a bit of a fan base. We'd hire buses for yeah. our fans to come to gigs. And uh, yeah, it, and it was great fun. We do that for the podcast. Really? No. Right, I didn't. Not yet. <laughs> it might happen in the future. It'll be a special one, so I don't know about it. He just said I doubt it. We all in only five minutes, he's slagging us off already. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> just, being, just being honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just what we need a bit of honesty. 
So, yeah. so from from that band, from from doing the club circuits and things like that. When when was your sort of next sort of leap to I'm gonna start my own band or I'm gonna form a band or well, get myself into it? A couple of people came up to me and said, 